Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love and in this video I thought I would share some of my very favorite art books. I've shared some of my favorite books that just inspire my creativity but I have lots of books that inspire different things for me and these are some of the ones that I have purchased that I thought you know were cool and kind of inspired some idea that I had or that I just wanted to look at or have to refer back to or it was just beautiful. <laughs> and so I wanted to just show you some of the ones I've collected one of these is Modern Watercolors and Botanicals, a creative workshop in watercolor, gouache, and ink from Sarah Simon. And what I liked about this one is it just has some yummy information and how-tos in creating some different projects. Like, look how pretty that was right there. This right here, totally beautiful it, it kind of inspires a, a moment of joy for me right there you know I'm all about being inspired by what you've got going on some serendipity things what feels good the colors the playing in different colors and mark making and so we've got all kinds of yummy ideas in this book and I think that this is a good one if you're looking for some further information on watercolor ink uh, if you like flowers I love flowers so that was kind of what interested me also um, gouache I'm really interested in gouache I have some new gouache coming I can't wait to get it and uh, you know gouache the watercolor gouache is is like a watercolor but it's more highly pigmented and matte when it kind of goes down so it works kind of like a watercolor in between a watercolor and an acrylic paint and so I love that there's a medium kind of in between those um, so this is a beautiful book to play in I also love this imagine a forest designs and inspirations for enchanting folk art by Dinara Miratop Mira Telpova. I apologize if I said that wrong. Um, what I love about this book is I already love folk art. I love that Scandinavian folk art kind of look and this looks like that type of thing to me and I love all the patterns and I love all the details and decorations within a design. It's not like we just painted a leaf. We painted a leaf in a leaf in a leaf with some extra little uh, doolollies around it and we made it really intricate and I love looking at the beautiful patterns of folk art and it inspires me even though I don't really create folk art um, as the thing that I'm inspired to make who knows one day I might you know you never know what inspires you from year to year but what I really love looking at is all the doodles and designs within the pattern because it inspires yummy mark making in the things that I like to create I like to put doodles and marks and hash lines and dashes and different things like that in my abstract art and this gives me a lot of great ideas like look at this yummy little scale pattern here in the roof of the castle totally a mark that we could incorporate in our abstract designs and it has a lot of botanical work in it and if you like doing botanical ink drawings on top of watercolor for instance great ideas on how to draw them and make them look a certain way I just love all the ideas in this book it inspires a lot of good stuff um, so this book definitely a must imagine a forest and I'm gonna link these below for you just in case if I can find them all um, this is a fun book here watercolor for the soul by Sharon Stevens and I liked this because at the time I was wanting to paint watercolor flowers. I was drawn to the cone flower here in the drawing here. So I'm like, yeah, that's what I want to draw. And then past that, I'm just inspired to look at the different projects. I like bookmarks. Um, some of the things that I cut up in my art, I will cut into you know smaller pieces like a bookmark. And so I like the different ideas for some of those. Here's that lovely cone flower so you can take a look at like the colors that you start with and how we mix the colors so I like that these kind of get into mixing and they give you specific projects to experiment with 
and grow your watercolor skills as far as painting you know specific things um, painting rocks or pebbles that's a really popular thing that you see a lot of people doing and then also you know pebbles and rocks with patterns drawn on it is very popular I've done some of that myself so yummy for learning to paint specific things and how to get there so this is a fun book to have watercolor for the soul watercolor essentials this was a book that i got a while back for creating texture in watercolor because i went through a period where i was creating watercolor textures to add to photography so some of these books i've had for quite a few years but look at that yummy texture and stuff and it's all about how to get texture in that watercolor so now that I paint a lot with watercolor and I focus a lot on different watercolors. I'm curious, you know, when I do real paintings, you know, how do I get that texture that I'd like to have? And this is a great reference for figuring out the texture and the different values and painting wet on wet and wet on dry. So it's a really good foundational book for watercolors. Oh, see, look at that right there. All that texture right there in that pair. You can see how I do a lot of that kind of texture in my abstracts. Um, so a lot of good stuff. And it tells you, you know, the different types of salt gives you different looks and the different things that you could experiment with to get different textures, coffee grounds, all kinds of fun stuff, tea. My, uh, my aunt does uh, this Batik, Batik. B-A-T-I-K, however you say, Botic. She does that type of watercolor painting. I have the most beautiful echinacea uh, coneflower painting that she did in this technique with one of my photographs. It's like, whoa, blew my mind when she gave that to me years ago. And uh, lots of good ideas for watercolor and a good, just basic, essential book to have. So this is Watercolor Essentials by uh, Bridget O'Connor. And then some of these are newer. Um, Flora Bowley and Lindsay Links, Fresh Paint. I love this because it's fun, it's bright, it's let loose, it's create in a style that, you know, I kind of create in a lot of times, that bright, and this is uh, creating 100 small mixed media paintings. So if you wanted to do the 100 day project and have a book to guide you, this could be a great choice. Um, so this book's great. So there's lots of good stuff and ideas uh, to just spark your creativity and some things in here uh, that students did and kind of some questionnaires for helping you narrow down things and creating your own stencils and all kinds of like, you know, mark making and experimenting with mark making. Some inquiry, again, more questionnaires for you to kind of get down your thoughts. So super fun book for getting you in the mood to create and have some fun. Fresh Paint by Flora Bali and Lindsay Lynx. Okay, ha ha ha. This is a book that I actually just got a week or two ago. Color in and out of the garden. Watercolor practice for painters, gardeners, and nature lovers by Lawrence Edwards Faulkner. So this, I actually follow this lady on Instagram because I'm obsessed with her pictures of flowers on top of the color palettes that she creates from those pieces of botanicals or whatever it is that she's been inspired by. And so this is a great book source reference for color palettes and you know picking color palettes that maybe you want to create an abstract piece in it's also a great source for doing some of these color palettes from an object ah what a great exercise talk about 100 day project material this is the kind of stuff where you could definitely do a project on these and do a color palette every day and you would really gain just the most amazing knowledge and push your skills in the art of color mixing and color palettes and matching color to an object that you're creating a color palette for 
Oh, look at those. Ooh, see, now that's right up my alley. Now this color right here, my very favorite color, kind of a soft aqua teal. Oh, so beautiful. I totally will create something with that. So this is great inspiration. Look how beautiful those are. Nettles. Oh, goes from a yummy purple to deep greens to kind of a, a brown toasty tone. Look at that. Arr! These are so gorgeous. Did you just see that one? Oh, look at that. Yummy, lighter, neutrally. Oh my gosh. This is like one of my new favorite books and I just can't wait to just sit and look be inspired come create go back and look again look at those yummy colors oranges and reds oh love that <laughs> you see how exciting this book can be so this is a good one color in and out of the garden okay oh, i love that one this is another book i got a while back loose watercolor flowers because i was in that flower kind of that flower mode and so Oh, I loved it because it kind of showed, you know, how you could get some of these pretty watercolors painted. So if you like the loose water flower, watercolor flowers, or you want to look at some color palettes, and you want to figure out how can I make beautiful watercolor wreaths and uh, botanicals and lines of color and how to go around, oh, this is a great book. Look at all this yummy pattern. You can make your own repeating patterns. Look how gorgeous that is. Blue and orange. What a good color palette. Uh, this book's not in English though. I did buy this book in uh, the language it was it came in because uh, it was not offered in English. But I thought the, the sometimes it's the pictures that I find so inspiring. I don't even need to know what it says. And it's a book that I might get if I find the translation into English, but I don't even care because I'm just inspired by just looking at how somebody created stuff, the steps that got to certain looks. So this is a beautiful book, but it's not in English. So even though the title was in English, <laughs> the book wasn't in English. So. I will link it, but if I, if I see an English edition, I'll link that too. This I've had for a little while. Okay, so this last book I want to show you is Gustav Klimt. And I'll have to flip through to make sure I'm not showing things that would hit the YouTube censors because he does have a little nudity in his art and better safe than sorry. But what I think I love about Gustav Klimt is all the gold. And you know me, if you've been on my channel anytime, that my very favorite is my gold accents and my paste and my mica gold by the Kiritaki company that I link with every video because if I did a piece of art and I didn't use gold in it, it might not have been a good painting day. <laughs> so I think that's why I love the Gustav Klimt stuff so much because of all the gold. And these are beautiful. I like the big book. This is the great big book. The little book it's like this size. You can get the same book little. This is Gustav Klimt, The Complete Paintings by Taschen. Um, the reason I wanted the big book though is because I like to do artist studies and usually when I do an artist study it's not the traditional study where I'm trying to repaint the painting. It's a more of a study of the color palettes. But I also with this particular artist like to do a study of the patterns because look at all the yummy patterns that we could then include in our abstract art. And you know the kiss is one of the most famous paintings but if you look real close into the kiss look at all the lines patterns circles squares look at all the details that we can see in that painting that then we could take inspiration from and so i like taking inspiration from the masters in non-traditional ways i like to look at colors i like to look at patterns i like to look at different things that inspired them and say "Ooh, that inspires me too like with the gold i'm totally inspired by the gold so i got the big book thinking that i would do like a master study of the Klimt paintings and stuff and maybe I'm not going to be trying to paint the entire painting as he did but I want it to be large enough so I can see the details and I want to be able to see the colors and I want to be able to see the patterns and just the way that you put things together and I just wanted to be able to have it big because I'm getting old I can't see <laughs> 
Let's see, I gotta, this is Gustav. <laughs> so I love this book because it's got all his paintings large enough for you to see. And it's got a little info about him and we can see the patterns and we can see the different things that he painted and what he was thinking and the story behind some of them. So this is a yummy book to be inspired by for me. So I hope that some of these look interesting and I hope that maybe some of this inspired you like it inspires me. So I will try to link these below the video for you. This is the most beautiful book. And then I'll see you next time.